Um, hello everybody. Uh, our experiment today is the um, pro wave, which is experiment number six. Okay, fire star single face bridge rectifier, which is a full wave. Last time we took the single face half wave, which is still this one right here. Okay. This is the experiment, the old experiment, which is the half wave single face rectifier. And I uploaded uh, last week for you guys. And you can uh, watch it on YouTube and the uh, link is in your blackboard. It's still, this, this is the same. I'm gonna do a little change. Okay, you can then um, see this one right here. This is the circuit. This is the new circuit. I will just chain two wires. That's the only difference. And I'm gonna show you what are the wires. I will chain this wire right here because the previous one, the previous one is this circuit. Okay which we will go from the load to the neutral. From the load to the neutral. Now, we will go from the load to the bridge, and then between the two diode, uh, two thyristors, we'll go to the neutral. That's the only difference. Okay? I'm going to show you there. So you can come with me now. Okay. Okay, let's see right here what we will change. The power is off. So I will take this. You guys see this one right here? I will take this from the neutral. I will put it right here. Or right here, I will make sure that this is closed. Okay. So those are connected. And I will come from the neutral here. You guys see this? From the neutral. Okay which is this, I came from the neutral right here. You guys see this? I came from the neutral right here between the bridge, between the uh, thyristors. Okay, now this is the circuit. So as I told you, it's the same as the previous one, connection wise. What I have done before it was like this. Okay, that was the half wave, no change. And now, I will leave those two right here for the synchronization between the thyristor unit and the V-source. So I'm going to come here now. So now I will have those two thyristors and those two thyristors. Okay. I make sure that this is closed and this is closed between those. And then between, I'm going to come to the neutral. So those are, this is connected to the source here, the bridge. Here, this is my source. And this is my bridge. And going out to the DC meter, to the isolator right here. And then to the load, which is the inductive and resistive. This is both, okay? This is both. I can connect one only. So if I want to connect only the resistive, I will take out this, okay? I will come back here. I will take this and come back here. Now the resistive load connected by itself with no inductive. I'm gonna connect the inductive later. And this is ready for the freewheeling diode, okay? Because the freewheeling diode is coming next, which is this. This is the freewheeling diode right here, okay? We will see it next, but let's see now. This is our experiment, and we will apply 90%. Uh, we will apply 90% right here. And the angle is 45. We already set it 45, so we will turn on and apply. It's already 90% here. Okay. And this is my, sorry, because this one just goes out. Okay, I'll turn on. Let me just check this. I need to put this back. Okay. 
Okay, let's let's do it again. Okay, let's put this back. Okay. That's my output right here for the resistive load only. Okay. Now I can change the load and put it both. So turn off. Okay. That's what I will do right here. So I'm going to put this here and then this will be included. And this, I will read everything. Okay, let me repeat because I think I was covering the, the... So this was before the resistive load only. Okay, this one is out here. So this was the resistive load right here. Okay, and I'm reading only the resistive load. And this is my resistive load. Okay. Now I will make the load both. So I will come here. I will take this. And I will connect the in inductive load with the resistive load in series. Okay. And I will see. I think I already choose the values for both. So now let's turn on and see here we will have a ripple. Okay, we're gonna have a ripple, and the uh, uh, current is there. If I if I increase the inductive, if I have more inductive, then um, uh, I will have like straight DC, as we explained before. Okay. Now let's see the freewheeling diode. And those are the values for you just to see the values. Those are the values. This is the voltage here, okay? Actually, it will be, if I apply 90%, it will be more, okay? It will be around, yes, it's it's the same around like um, 70, 65, something like this, if I apply 95. And then here, this is the current. I have the current is one, and the current here is like 65. So a little bit different than this. So the power to do the calculation. And the conduction angle, if we have inductive, it will be 180. You know how to, how to calculate this. We have done this before. But if we have uh, resistive load, then it will be less 135 because we will start at 45. So 180, which is uh, beta minus alpha 145, the conduction angle will be 135. We know that gamma equals beta, which is 180 minus alpha, which is which is 45 alpha. So the conduction angle will be 135, okay? Then we can flip, and this is the drawing. This is the voltage. This is the voltage and current for uh, resistive load. And this is the voltage and current for uh, inductive. And this is the freewheeling. We can see the freewheeling right here. First, let's look at the circuit. This is the circuit here. So we're gonna take the freewheeling. Because we're going to use a, a power diode, okay? And we will connect one here, okay, to the bottom. And the other one to the top. Okay, my, my bet. So let's, okay, this is here. Let's take it out. Okay. Okay, so we will connect the freewheeling. Oh, I should have something, uh, okay, freewheeling should be in the top, to the Q2, and the other one should be here, but it should, I should have this, I have still have the same problem, okay, now I have, I think I am okay. Okay, but this one here again. See now, I think we have we have solved the problem. This is the freewheeling now. Okay, we apply the freewheeling right here, and this is what we can see, and it's moving. So I will stop, and see here we get rid of the negative ripple. No more negative ripple right here. Okay, negative ripple is gone. 
and the current is continuous and that's because of the freewheeling okay so if I if I remove the freewheeling okay I will move this okay see here that's the negative ripple I'm gonna put the freewheeling okay here now the negative ripple is gone and that's the experiment for the um, for the full wave single phase and this is the results okay we can see here this is the current and this is the output power and this is the voltage voltage no change and what's that says what's what effect does the freewheeling diode have on the operation we know this okay we answered this for you last time okay and um you can look at this, I'm gonna just, uh... and that's the experiment. This is the experiment for full wave, okay? With both loads, okay, inductive and resistive. And the angle here is uh, 45. And if we play with the angle, this is stopped actually. And if I take the, rem remove the freewheeling diode, I'm gonna remove the freewheeling diode here. And I can play with uh, with the angle if I want to play. See here. This is the 45. Our experiment. If I increase it and make it, for example, uh, 60. This is my. This is 60. This is 60 here. And see how it changes. If I make this one 90 here, you can look at this. This is 90 now. This is 90 here. You guys see here. There is a gap now. Now, this is discontinuous. We explained this in uh, we explained this in theory class. We said that the inductive must be like large enough, and the uh, for continuous the inductive must be large enough, and the alpha the firing angle must be small enough. In this case, it's not small enough. So here, the alpha is big enough, and the inductive is small enough so in this case it's discontinuous this is discontinuous current and it's clear see here this is discontinuous current this is discontinuous current uh, inductive load is small enough and alpha firing alpha, firing angle alpha is big enough in this case our current is discontinuous current if so now see this is here big the firing alpha, firing angle. If we see here, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you both, so you can look at both, which is the firing angle and the oscilloscope. You can look at both. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it down. I'm gonna bring it down and see there. You can see there. I'm gonna bring it down into 45. In this case, it will be continuous current. See here. That's 45 here or 44 and here see the current is continuous. In this case, we can say that the inductive is large enough and the firing, uh, firing angle is small enough. So if I make it more smaller right here, like uh, 25, it's 25 right here. Okay, it's uh, moving fast. So I can stop right here. You can see it's continuous current, okay? This is the experiment for full wave, single phase, controlled rectifier. Okay, see you next experiment.